Also from Homeboys Videos Plus, Scratching 101, with Cool DJ Red Alert, in effect. You know who I am? Do you know who I am? You know who I am. Cool DJ Red Alert, 98.7 KISS FM. You know what I do? I do this. I do this. I do this. And you can do this too. You want to know how you can do it? Do you really want to know? Then check out Homeboy's Video Plus. Yes. <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is Spinnerella from Salt and Pepper, and I'm here to take a different approach in DJing, girl DJing. There really aren't any differences between male and female DJs because, you know, being a girl DJ, you have to be every bit as good as a guy would, you know, to be accepted as a good DJ. It isn't really hard, you know. All you have to do is practice, really. There are a few sacrifices, though, as to being a girl DJ. You're going to take a lot of criticism, you know, because it doesn't really seem that DJing is for girls, mostly for guys. So being a girl DJ is kind of unique, you know, I would say. And it's fun being unique. <laughs> um, expect a lot of criticism because that's how I got by. You know, I was willing to take the criticism to push me along. Another sacrifice would be nails. I don't have long nails because I'm not comfortable. And as you can see while I'm DJing, that they're short and I'm, you know, very comfortable with them. And holding your hand when, when you first learn how to DJ is kind of funny, you know, because you're new to it. It's like you've just been born to it. Okay, so sometimes you might tend to hold your hand like this or something, you know. But that's not the correct way of doing it. Try to learn to hold them right, you know, straight. You know, be comfortable with it. Look how my hands are straight, aligned with my elbows. <laughs> it's not like this. No pigeon fingers here. <laughs> to master DJing, you want to practice a lot, you know, because you just, you know, learn one routine and practice it. That way you know how to be good at it, at that certain routine. Practice is always good at whatever you do, you know. Uh, make tapes. Make, you know, make tapes of yourself so that you know where your mistakes are. You know, take your own criticism and be open to it. A good thing to, to learn is how to cover your mistakes, you know, by using a scratch. While I'm DJing, sometimes I might make a mistake or, you know, and I have to cover it. And I know how to cover it, 
You know, it takes quick thinking. That's another skill of being a good DJ. Okay, you might, you might catch something offbeat and want to cover it. The thing to do by covering it is do a little scratch, like jigga, 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 and then throw it back on or something. Try to cover your mistakes. Yes, the rhythm, yes. the rebel. Yes. I perform, you know, so I have to learn how to stir a crowd. Like, there's a part in that show when Salt says, yo, Spendy, hit it, right? And at that point, that's where I have to hit it, you know, because that, that really hypes the crowd. So when she says, Spendy, hit it, and I throw that record on, the crowd goes, ooh, you know, they're, you know, they're really wild with it, you know. And, but the bad thing about being a performing DJ is, you know, I have to be away from home a lot. You know, so sometimes it's good being a DJ, but at that point, that's when it's not, because you're never home. Most of the time, you're not home. You're not with your friends. You can't hang out. You can't be with your family. I mean, there's a lot of things that being a performing DJ, you know, takes from you because of the fact that you're away. You can't hang out like everyone else, you know. But there are some good things in being a DJ. You know, it's fun. I get to do things like this, you know, <laughs> and doing shows and the pay, and it's just a great hobby. I love DJing. And, you know, it's, it's a good hobby in the way that, that bike riding is a hobby for you, or skating is a, uh, is a hobby for you, or driving a car is a hobby for you. I mean, it's not really that hard. It's fun, and it's not illegal. <laughs> lucky because you have the benefit of learning by watching Red Alert, Clark Kent, and myself, Cinderella, you know, and that's good. Because in the beginning, I didn't really have that advantage of learning how to be a good DJ. I had to go out in the street and hear, hey, I heard he taught you how to DJ, and I heard he taught you how to DJ, when really there was really only one person who basically taught me how to DJ. There is. I go a lot of different places and I always hear, how did you learn how to do that, you know? But now I'm showing you how. Showing all of you, all of my fans out there, I love you all. Thanks for your support. From Spinderella, as well as Salt and Pepper. Check this video out a few times. Practice and listen to all the tips and be good. I'm out of here. Get on the dance floor, let me see what you got Cause it's hot, he came with my head
you wanna cut. How you doing? I'm Clark Kent. I'm Dana Dane's DJ. You can also hear me on KNON Radio in Dallas, Texas. 90.9, so don't forget it. Check this out. What I'm going to do is let you know about a couple of scratches that I do, a lot of scratches that a lot of people do to sound good. I'm going to name them, and then I'm going to show you how I do them. I'm going to show you how I do them. You'll have to figure it out for yourself. This is the easy way. First, I'm going to tell you about backspinning. We call it backspinning because it's the, the art is to turn the record backwards and catch a beat simultaneously, not simultaneously, but while this record is playing and keeping the constant flow of a certain sound. It sounds like this. Cut. See what I mean? The constant flow. Always turn the record back to a certain point so that the beat is never missed, the beat is never dropped. I explained backspinning. Now I'm going to explain why some DJs turn their turntables sideways. 
When you're scratching and backspinning, when you're just scratching, it's simple to go like this. But it's not easy to backspin and keep catching a beat, especially if the needle is all the way in the middle of the record. I'll explain why. There it is. There it is. For that simple reason. For that simple reason, you turn the turntable sideways. All of the space that you did not have when the turntable is like this is all the space that you have when the turntable is like this. There it is, there it is, there it is. Obviously, you can spin the record all the way back to the beginning with your hand like this because your hand will never hit the needle because it's all the way at another angle. I keep mine up front because I learned like this. I can do it both ways. I almost decided to make a transition, but I didn't. I cut like this. We have something called a quick scratch. A quick scratch is a repeated, like a rapid fire scratching of one certain sound so you can always, so it sounds like it's real fast, real quick. Sounds like this. Repeatedly, over and over, the, the idea and the way to do it is to move the cross fade as fast as you move the record back and forth, but only catch the fourth going motion. Right. Then we have something called a drag scratch. A drag scratch is sort of intermediate. What you're trying to do is catch the backwards flow real slow, catch the frontwards flow quickly. It's also called rhythm scratching. You have to catch a rhythm while you're doing a drag scratch, otherwise it sounds funny. You don't want it to sound funny, you want it to sound good. I'll try to do one. This is the, this is the drag sound. That sound. And the way to get it is to move the cross fader to the middle, or the up and down, the slide fader, to the middle while you're bringing the record backwards in a slow motion. Transformer is a new cut that came out, like around 86. It's, the, it's to make a record sound just the way the Transformers sound, Transformer cartoon sounds, when they're changing. They make a certain sound. The sound is an off and on sound. It's like a frontwards record, a record going frontwards and a record going backwards at the same time and turning on and off and on and off. The sound sounds something like this. <laughs> to get the record to go frontwards and backwards, you don't hear a clear sound, you just hear an off and on sound. You could do it with the phono line button. I don't choose to do it that way. It sounds like this. Then we have something called a gallop scratch. A gallop scratch is a quick shiver that lasts for about a half a, not even a whole half a second, and it makes it sound like a horse's, a horse's gallop. Here it is. I'll do it slow for you. Now I'm gonna show you what I, what I told you, everything I told you, put together. I showed you transforming. I showed you quick scratching. I showed you gallop scratching. I showed you rhythm scratching. Now I'm going to put it all together and try to get busy for you.
Now, double beating is something that takes a lot of practice. What it is, is catching, catching one turntable before you catch the other one, but also catching that turntable back before you catch this one. It's hard to explain, but it's better to show it. It's easier to show it. As you notice, there's a, there's a sound that goes cut, cut, huh, huh. In other words, that's double beating. You hear both of the records at the same time, but not at the same time. It gives a double effect. Explain that to me again. Explain it to you again. OK. What you have to do is catch this record and then let this one follow it behind it. You could do it either way. You could catch this record first and let this one follow behind it. As long, the, what the idea is to do is to get a double sound. To make, say the record goes cut, huh. You want to hear the record go cut, cut, huh, huh. In other words, it sounds like this. Cut. Cut. extra add-on was something called a triple double cut. That's when you add the last double sound and make it a triple. I'll show this to you again. Cut, cut. As you heard, the record went cut, cut, huh, huh, huh. So it's a double, triple effect. Beatbox scratching is catching a snare and a kick that are very close to each other and making a new beat with it. It goes a little something like this. As you can see, you're catching the kick, you slow it down, catch the snare. Or you can catch them both together, it causes a different effect. When you catch the kick by itself, it's just this effect. Then you want the snare to give it the extra drum effect, why we call it a beatbox. Shiver scratching is another form of scratching First person I ever heard to do it was DST. He showed me. It's the art of shaking the record and giving it a, like a shivering effect or a thundering effect. It's called shivering, thundering, rhythm, um, rebel scratching. Goes like this. What? Shake the record back and forth, give it an effect. Well, there's also something that builds off of this called a helicopter scratch. You call it a helicopter scratch because the sound of the scratch changes. It sounds like a helicopter going frontwards and backwards. The way you do that is the same shaking, but you're also moving the record slowly, slowly but surely backwards and frontwards. I'm on stage a lot with Dana Dane, and on stage I do a lot of tricks. When I do my tricks, I take off my headphones because it gives you the best agility and movement. Lets you move a lot easier. Doesn't get you tangled in your wires as you're doing certain tricks. I'm going to show you spinning behind the back. There it is. 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 I showed you back spinning behind my back, spinning around in a circle. I also noticed that I also showed you spinning with my mouth and spinning with my elbows. Those are certain things that I do on stage to prove that I am really a good DJ and not a whack DJ. Whack DJs are the ones who cannot hold a beat. 
You shall not be whack DJs if you understand this video. Now let's see if you're really down. Get a pencil and paper. Here's Clark's quiz. Turn your back, and when you hear the scratch, write down the name of that scratch. Ready? First scratch. Second scratch. Here's the third scratch. The fourth scratch. Now, the fifth scratch. Now turn around and check it out. Scratch one, transforming. Scratch two, double beating. Scratch three, drag. Scratch four, beatbox. And the fifth scratch was shivering or thundering. If you had them all, you're on the money. Now Clark continues with more. I'm gonna to explain to you which scratches you would use on a radio, which scratches you would use at a show, or which scratches you would use in a club because you cannot use all of them in all the same places. Scratches like a backspin are very exciting because they a lot of people want to see how fast you can be. You will use those in a show. You could use them in a club for giving an edit effect, but you can't go that fast because then you'll throw the people off when it comes to dancing. Scratches like a gallop, they're just for effect. Scratch over another record while you're doing a gallop. If you do a gallop over another record, it just sounds like an effect. Transformers are strictly effect records, effect scratches. I'll give you an example of why we call a transformer, a, a transformer an effect scratch. Double beats. 